Hey guys, in this lesson we're going to look at polymorphism. We're going to talk about what it actually is and how it works and what it means. It's really just a big word that means something rather simple. And we're going to look at a couple of examples of what it is. So what is polymorphism? Well, the definition is it means many different forms. So you can have one thing and it could be treated as, as one thing, but it can have multiple different forms but still be treated as one type of thing. That'll make sense as we write the code out for this. It means objects can be treated as their base classes without any fuss. So like we had the character class and then we had the Nicholas class. Well, our Nicholas class was treated as a character class without any fuss. Very simple, it was a character class. That is the base of polymorphism right there. And it also means derived classes can override virtual methods defined in their parents. So we had that speak method defined. What this means is we could have added the modifier of virtual to that method. And then in our Nicholas class, we could have overridden the functionality of that method and made it do something different for that derived class. Or in our Bob class, it could have done something different than the Nick class, but still have the base functionality of the parents speak method and we'll look at that and see how that works so here's the example of character being nicholas we wrote this in the last lesson it makes sense character is or nicholas is a character very simple that is the basis of polymorphism and then we have the overriding of a virtual method so we have the speak method on character but it is a virtual method in character and then in tommy we have an override method of the same signature it's called speak no parameters and it does something differently. So now whenever we call speak on Tommy, instead of calling the base speak method, it will call the derived speak method that would say, I'm cool guy Tommy. And really we could leave it off there and just say that's that's what it is, let's move on to the next lesson. But I know we wanna write some code, so we're gonna do that real quick. What I have here is an example that we're gonna make do something. So I have an enemy class, it has a name and damage, it's much like our character class with the name, but we added the damage variable here that we can add to it, make it a bit more of an interesting program. And then we have an attack method instead of a speak method that simply writes out the name of the enemy, says it's attacking, dealing, however much damage it does. So then our constructor doesn't just add a name now, it actually adds damage as well. So this would say for the Elder Dragon, Elder Dragon attacks, dealing 25 damage. Pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to write an attack method for Elder Dragon that could also do something differently. It could take that attack method from the base class here and do that, then do something special as well, or just completely override that method and do its own unique thing. And we could still simply call it by calling the attack method on that enemy the same way I'm doing attack right here. So if I were to run this right now, I get Elder Dragon attacks dealing 25 damage. That's what you expect because we know how inheritance works from the last lesson. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna write an attack method. It's gonna be a void and I wanna call it attack. Now this is the exact same signature minus the access modifier here of the method that we defined, that I defined on enemy. I hover over this, it's gonna say, elder dragon dot attack hides inherited member enemy dot attack. Use the new keyword if hiding was intended. So what that means is I could say um, new void here and it's gonna say this method's intention was to hide that attack method. We're not gonna get into that though. We're gonna be looking at the actual overriding of the attack method. So other than that, this is the same signature. I'll make this a public as well. So it's public void attack, it's the exact same thing. And these again could be protected, but I'll get into that in a later lesson when we talk about some more modifiers. So public void attack. Now, I want this to override this functionality because right now if I were to write my own method right here, console.write line, I would say elder dragon, but it still says that it hides that method. So what I wanna do, is I'm gonna tag this as virtual as we saw in that slide. I'm gonna tag this as override. Then this is gonna be the method that gets called whenever we call attack on the Elder Dragon as opposed to this method. So public virtual, which means that this method can be overridden. It means that this method should be overridden in fact, 
it is waiting to be overridden. But if it's not, you can still call attack on it, and this will be the method it's called. It'll call the base method from the base class. So if it's not overridden, that happens there. So now what I can do is I can tag this one as override. And that says this method, the intention of this method is to override the virtual method in the parent class by the same signature. So the same method name and the same parameters. We have no parameters, so we have the empty parentheses there. So now whenever we call attack on Elder Dragon, it's going to call this attack method as opposed to this attack method because we are overriding that attack method with this attack method. So as an example, I'll play this. Elder Dragon is pretty sweet. He attacks you and kills you. Not a very sweet dragon, really, but uh, he's pretty powerful. And that's pretty cool, right? But what about, let's say I wanted to write extra functionality. I didn't want to just override the whole method. Maybe I wanted to do something extra, but still do the base classes method. Well, for us, it's very simple to do. I can do base dot attack. Base refers to the parent class. And then we're referring to the base dot attack method which is this method right here. So we're going to call that method, and then we're going to do something extra. So this override does that method and then whatever extra thing we wanted to do. So it actually does both methods. So now it's going to say Elder Dragon attacks dealing 25 damage, as we see here, Elder Dragon 25 damage. Elder Dragon is pretty sweet. He attacks you and kills you. So not only did he kill you, but he also hurts you beforehand. And that's pretty much all there is to understanding polymorphism. If you understand that you can treat an object, as we see here, let me go back, treat an object as its base class, treat a derived class as its base class, that is polymorphism. But then we can also do something on that by overriding the functionality of the base class with the derived class, as you see here, with speak and speak, and as we have in this class here. So we'll get into more access modifiers later on in this course, but just understand that these fields been marked with protected means I can use them in a derived class. I can access them in the derived class, as you see here, no problem. Whereas if they were private, I could not. I would have to access them in the scope they were defined in. In that case, it would be in the class of enemy. As you can see there, I marked that as private, and now name says that it is inaccessible due to its protection level. So that is encapsulation in a nutshell, which is also a pillar of object-oriented programming. So you have to understand the scope of your, uh, of, of your properties, of your methods. And that's something that I'm assuming is understood, but we'll talk a bit about it as we go throughout the course anyway, just in case it's not. And throughout this course, we're going to look at interfaces. We're going to look at different Lambda expressions and the Lambda operator. We're going to look at link, all kinds of cool things like that. And I don't really know the order, but now we have pretty much the basics out of the way. So now we can just kind of go from there and do some cool stuff. So I will see you in the next lesson, whatever it may be.